good morning all participants now for this morning session i on behalf of organizing committee i welcome you all again for the first session on the third day now i would like to introduce professor ayan bhattacharji and it is my great pleasure to introduce professor ayan bhattacharji so he is a working as a professor in department of physics nit meghalaya today first session is based on the fit india so as i know him sir is very hard working for his fitness as well as for wellness so based on the that as per personally i know him so i can say that you will get so much knowledge and the pattern how to make yourself fit and well okay so now again i would like to welcome you sir professor ayan bhattacharji and with these words i would like to hand over the session to professor ayan bhattacharji sir <coughs> Uh, thank you akhil sir for the nice introduction actually when uh, uh, dr akhil uh, approached me with this uh, proposal to do a session on yoga meditation stress management i said yes but again as he said i am just a professor of physics and uh, i have not done these kind of things earlier so i don't know what exactly to do i am not professionally into anything but still uh, i know that uh, the people who are all here are from engineering background so let's see if uh, i am a physicist you are engineers so how do we go about it uh, in our own ways so that is how i have uh, thought of uh, uh, just uh, talking to you i'll not make any presentation yes i'll use some devices and uh, just keep a pen and paper in front of you in case i ask a few questions to for you to write it might be helpful I, i'm not very sure I, I, uh, i'll do that or not uh, i have not planned anything uh, very precisely or very uh, you know systematically for this talk we'll just uh, go with the flow and uh, again uh, i invite everyone to just uh, uh ask questions or even give me suggestions because uh, i know that most of us face uh, life uh, and pandemic has taught a lot of things to us and so let's go ahead with it so uh, let me start with a small story uh, i don't know how authentic it is but again we all get uh, Uh, our information from google these days so that's what i got so this story is about uh, john lennon john lennon was the um, we don't want he doesn't need an introduction beatles okay so when john lennon was a very young kid in school the teacher one day asked uh, uh, all the kids what do you want to be when you grow up i think echo is coming so please mute your mic yeah so uh, john lennon was asked uh, what do you want to be when you want when you grow up and uh, all the students of the class was asked and everyone writes as it may be in india people will write i want to be a doctor or an engineer and by chance uh, if not in not a doctor or an engineer maybe a ca or a astronaut or a scientist or whatever 
um i don't think anyone will write that he or she wants to be a teacher or a faculty but still uh people write these things john lennon he had written i just want to be happy when the teacher saw the answer the teacher said john you have not understood my question and john immediately told the teacher no teacher you have not understood life so that's what uh you know we can start thinking about what we want to be and what have we become so with that story in mind i welcome all the participants from all across india i don't know if any abroad participants are there or not but everyone to this uh, workshop i know it's been hardcore blockchain and technical things and let's see how this uh, uh, session goes on in a real uh, kind of a scenario i would have invited everyone to visit shillong enjoy the beauty it's uh, raining here today and uh, a little bit chilly uh, you know uh, it's uh, very different from the rest of india where you are using fan or ac uh, we have already started using sweaters out here but uh, again mm, let's uh, get back to the talk and as uh, akhil sir had requested me i need to talk about three things yoga meditation and stress management so let's do one by one now since we are in this online kind of a mode it's very difficult to do yoga so let's talk about that and let's find some easy ways of doing things see yoga the word itself it means unification or uh, mathematically if we say plus no plus positive it's a very negative word these days but still we need the positivity and plus you add up what what do we add up in our life we need to add up wellness in terms of being fit making things work now uh, let me share my screen and show you something and just do it in a moment yes share screen yes so uh, in this uh, screen if you can see i have uh, uh, the outline of a human body okay. now since uh, we have so many engineers around let's talk yoga in terms of the joints now the common uh, see yoga has two parts to it one is the physical part one is the mental part we'll go to the mental part later let's first do the physical part the physical part is about the joints we need to make all the joints in our body work now there are asanas there are a lot of sequences but to make things easy let's do it this way let's start right from the bottom here and we'll move upwards this way we start with all the joints the first joint here is your toe now engineering wise toes are hinge joints so when you have a hinge joint you know it will either move up or down here so that's how you start your yoga for your workout 
whatever you call it. So move your toes up, down, up, down, up, down, five times, ten times, whatever you are convenient with. Once you are done with your toes, go to your ankles. Now ankles, two-way rotation is possible. One is up, down here, and one is side, sideways this way. So five to ten times up, down, five to ten times sideways. And then you go to the knee joint. Now knee is a little bit complicated. As you grow up, you'll find that maximum people have uh, problems in their knees. And that's why special care needs to be taken. So the best thing to do is first give it a rotation. So first anti-clockwise and then clockwise. Okay, just give, uh, hold the knees together, give it a rotation, then go up hip joint, now, hip joint is a ball and socket joint. So whenever you have a ball and socket joint, you know that multidimensional motion is possible. And so, again, here, the leg goes up, down, up, down. Uh, okay, I just got a comment. Uh, screen is not shared. Can everyone see my screen, uh, uh, Akhil sir? Okay, yeah, many, many people are writing that it is shared. So I'm continuing. Okay, yeah. So uh, coming back to the hip joint, it's a ball and socket joint. So I said it is multidimensional motion. So what you need to do, your legs go up, down, up, down, up, down. And again, legs can be taken sideways. So once you do the up, down motion, go sideways, Again, five, ten. I'd prefer you do it ten times each leg. Uh, once you are done with the up, down, and the sideways motions, then give it a rotation. Again, ten times clockwise, ten times is anti-clockwise. And same happens to your shoulder joints. Again, another ball and socket joint. So another multi-dimensional motion. And again, what you have to do? Give your hands a rotation clockwise 10 times, anti-clockwise 10 times, then sideways from hips to, uh, you have your hands at the sides, take it upwards, raise it over your head, and do the same. You do it to uh, both hands together, one hand at a time, whatever your choice, just do it. Then comes the elbow joint. So elbow joint, the simple, this, do it 20 times. Make the joints move. You know, we need uh, engineers, you understand. If the joints are not moving, the joints get rusted, the movement gets restricted. So that is our job, make them move. Once you are done with the elbow, come down to the wrist. And once you are finished with the wrist, come to the fingers. Do something like this. Very sim simple. Okay. So you have done that much. Now comes a very complicated joint, which is your neck. And your neck is something like a spring out here. Now when you have a spring out here, what can you do? The spring needs to be extended and contracted in every possible directions. So what you need to do, some forward and backward bending, some sideways bending, that's all. Again, do it 10 times, 20, uh, 20 times a day. So this entire cycle, if you can repeat once a day, you will see it hardly takes 10 minutes, but it makes your body fitter. So this is the physical aspect. Now, this thing you do with standing, you can do it lying down. It doesn't uh, really matter. Okay. It's up to, the choice is yours. Okay. Yeah, I can complicate things, call it asanas, call it, uh, I can put restrictions of, let's say, where this dress, uh, where don't drink water, 
but you see uh, if i go to leave out the mental part of it only the physical part of it your leg joint or your joint in your hand is not affected by whether you have eaten or not eaten when you do something which is related to your uh, say lungs and your stomach then it matters so these kind of exercise for the joints you can do it any time whenever you find time take 10 minutes out because uh, whole day whole night we think of our others i'll come to that later when i talk about all these things but how much time do we give it give for ourselves for our body you will find that that is minimal we don't even tend to think about ourselves and that's why take 10 minutes give it to you do that okay. once you are done with that then comes what is the mental the mental part it's all about controlling your breathing see breathing is something we continuously do it we are doing it every second but we never think of it it has become a very involuntary kind of a thing can we do some controlled breathing and for that i'll prefer that you do it early in the morning in empty stomach again what you need to do is sit straight the backbone should be straight so whether you sit in a chair whether you can make a padmasana whether you make a sit cross legged uh, whatever well, but again two parameters you must be comfortable and secondly your spine must be straight once your uh, these two conditions are satisfied and preferably that your stomach is empty what you need to do is just control your bre uh, breathing so you do it this way you say if you breathe in for 2 seconds breathe out for three times that okay. slow down the breathing out part so if you breathe in for 2 seconds breathe out for 6 seconds if you breathe in for 3 seconds breathe out for 9 seconds just do that okay i'm just you know telling you try it out yourself you don't need a yoga guru you don't need a gym ins instructor anyone try it out if it helps you continue if it doesn't help don't continue do it for 7 days and see just this much once you are done with <coughs> this yes you can uh, try out things like kapalbhati you can try in anil anulom belom these kind of things a lot of videos are there i'll not go into all that but <coughs> give those few minutes to uh, <coughs> uh give those few minutes to yourself so joint exercise is done you have done a little bit of breathing now see the pain and engineer let us understand how blood flows in our body the heart is just a pump it's pushing blood into our body the blood circulates around it comes back to the heart uh, and uh, our lungs uh, is just inflating and deflating so th in this process what's happening is you have taken care of the joints you have taken care of oh, through breathing you have taken care of the heart and lungs but the fluid that circulates and if you go into the details of the blood you will see that blood is a non newtonian fluid it does not flow because of gravity it flows because the heart will pump it and there are these uh, motions which are involved which is called the uh, peristalsis and peristaltis uh, medical terms don't go into that but we need the blood flow to be very very smooth we don't want this blood to clot somewhere the blood to 
face resistance so what do we do for that just start walking all of you have mobile phones down any of the fitness apps google fit a very good app just <coughs> download it activate it walk for some number of steps fix fix it up that today i'll walk 5000 steps today i'll walk 8000 steps and try to achieve the target again it's not that you have to walk in the morning you have to walk in the evening nothing like that any time which is suitable only thing is when you are heavy you have taken heavy food just or uh, say after lunch avoid that because that creates uh, extra pressure on you otherwise any other time just take a walk when you are uh, holding your cell phone uh, instead of sitting keep walking whenever you are talking on the cell phone like this keep on walking you will see that if you have a 10 minutes conversation you have covered 1000 steps so keep on walking as you are walking you know all uh, this uh, <clears throat> calorie burning takes place so these are simple steps you can do to get to make you physically into a better state now once you have done all that let we can think of meditation now again whenever anyone talks of meditation we think of it has to be a room with some there should be a guru and it should be cool and calm but we don't have that ambience we have our own constraints so what exactly is meditation meditation is trying not to do anything anything at all whenever actually a, a survey was done that whenever like what people are doing what people are thinking at any moment in time and it it was done as a very elaborate research by one of these big american university either stanford or john hopkins one of those so <clears throat> what uh, the the results came is that 47% of the time people are not concentrating or listening to the things they are involved in they are lost in their thoughts so right now i can see 88 participants here so maybe 40 people are not even listening to this talk and that is an world average kind of a thing <coughs> no the thing is do we really need to think that much and what are we thinking most of the times you will find that we are either thinking of the past or we are thinking of the present do we really think anything else do we really think about the present because we cannot change our past we cannot change anything there but we are very intelligent about our past we know what wrong decisions we have taken what right decisions you have taken what decisions you could you should have chosen to take the other way but the time is gone so we know all that about our past we are planning for our future at all times i should get uh, to that position i should buy this car all sorts of things are there but what about the present are we thinking of the present do we really appreciate the present where we are living so let try to do that 
Oui. Euh... It's like, you know, when you are eating something, you know, some uh, very good dish, uh, say, uh, palak paneer or something, and a piece of this leaf, palak, has stuck in your teeth. And you are doing all your activities in life, but you are continuously pushing that leaf between your teeth. So that leaf, it's it's taking all your attention. It's not letting you settle down. This is what we are doing with our lives also. But those small problems that are not really affecting you, but we are thinking of them, writing about them, sharing about them in Facebook, and that way we are making our lives miserable. So why don't we start living in our present. And how do I live in my present? Let's switch off myself for 10 minutes a day. Let's, for 10 minutes, no cell phone, nothing. We just sit down and not try not to do anything. Now, that's a difficult thing to do, trying not to do anything. But uh, if we, uh, see any of the standard ways which are used by any of the yoga gurus or uh, spiritual gurus for meditation. And I found that it is a very effective technique, which is just try analyzing how you are breathing. Try to find out the way you are breathing in and how you are breathing out. Can you set that into the right rhythm. When you are breathing in, the air should flow inside, your lungs should expand, and when you are breathing out, the lungs should contract. Is that happening? And when that is happening, there should be a small difference in temperature between the air you breathe in and the air you breathe out, because what you breathe in is the ambient air, the an air in the natural environment, which is at that room temperature. But when you breathe out, the air has circulated in your lungs. It has absorbed some of the heat from your lungs, so the temperature has to increase that subtle change in temperature. Can we feel it? Just try to feel that for five minutes, 10 minutes, thinking of nothing else. You will find you are meditating. You, are, you have learned the art of meditation. I'm not, uh, I'm trying to make it as technical as possible. I'm not going into any niceties here because you will find very nice videos in the YouTube. But I'm going, uh, trying to make it technical for the technical people who are sitting out here. Now, as I was telling about the yoga, where some uh, <clears throat> wear some comfortable clothes. When I tell you about comfortable clothes, I find it's very difficult these days. If I go today to a shop to buy, a, say, a jeans, a trouser, a, je a pair of jeans, 10 years back, I'll just go, sir uh, or oh, madam, I need a pair of jeans. That salesman will ask me, what's your size? I'll tell uh, my waist is uh, 32. OK, um, here is a jeans. What color you like? So 5 to 10. Today, uh, if I go to a shop and ask, I need a pair of jeans, they ask me a lot of questions. Sir, you want slim fit? You want regular fit? You want comfort fit? So. 
i don't know what i want then you uh, want parallel or tapered you want low waist or normal you want a normal <coughs> uh, fa- fabric or stretchable fabric <coughs> you need acid wash or what kind of wash now i just need a pair of jeans but people have made my life complicated this marketing gimmicks do i need so much of choice just to select a pair of jeans do i need uh, just to buy a pair of jeans uh, uh, do i need to do a phd for uh, knowing the types of jeans this is a uh, information which is totally useless to me so but this is happening <clears throat> today you got to go to buy a um, packet of milk toned milk skim milk what not uh, is there when you go to, i wanted to buy a simple cell phone for my father now what is a simple cell phone you will not find one in the market uh, they will give you all sorts of uh, uh <clears throat> ideas uh well, it has this that fast charging then uh, this has uh, 4g 3g whatever but a simple phone with, through which i can just talk it's very difficult to find these days so why is we are trying to make our lives more and more complicated with this kind of choices whereas if we go a few days back 24th we had the 24th of march we had the <clears throat> we had the uh, thing lockdown and with this lockdown first it was uh, 21 days then the next 14 days so 35 days uh, roughly 40, 40 days we were confined at home those 40 days we should go back to that just think what you were doing that time uh, today we know even if we someone is corona positive we hardly are bothering about it people have forgotten the real threat of corona but those initial days of lockdown we thought the moment we, cor- we get corona we will die assuming uh, that we have all our basic needs done okay the basic needs of roti kapra makan food clothes shelter we had more or less the shelter is done clothes from march onwards how much how many clothes have you purchased and how many of your good clothes have you worn because whatever you are wearing you have to wash it next day or same day itself so you see but you went out during that lockdown just to get your food so that lockdown is a very big example a very big eye opener it has told you that what you need and what you are earning are and wh- what you are spending are very different your basic need for food what i don't know what about uh, uh, other bigger cities but uh, in shillong i could not for my whole family in that month i, I could spend maybe 10000 or 12000 i could not spend more than that because all the basic food i needed was only that much and that made me realize that if i earn say 1 lakh rupees and i can live i can pay say rent i can pay for food say 10000 rupees whatever rent i pay uh, clothes okay from time to time i'll be purchasing but everything taken together maybe i need 25 30000 rupees but yet 
we are all striving ahead to earn more and earn more and more because we are thinking of the future and we don't know we don't know if this pandemic will end by maybe two months or it will continue for two years or a new pandemic will come in, come on or there will be a war with china we know nothing yet we are planning for the future i know uh, you cannot give away the hope uh, we live uh, with our hopes but do we really strike this balance between present and future because this choosiness in our life i need that particular brand of jeans why do we ask that maybe uh, you know it is uh, in terms of comfort it gives us more of a mental comfort than a physical one but yet we are atta attached to particular brands uh, so much actually i have my son who is just uh, 13 years old he is also very choosy he says i will eat only lays chips i'll not eat uncle chips i don't know why it's basically a some potatoes fried in some way but still people are getting very 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 brand conscious another thing this uh, lockdown and uh, the pandemic has ta taught us see all of us were uh, even now we are all wearing the mask but even with the mask we don't make uh, mistakes in identifying people so we identify people not by their appearance but their overall set of behavior the way they walk the, the way and more or less uh, you will find that a lot of it has to do with uh, eyes the way we look at people and they look at us with that with the mask on us we have not even once or we have uh, mis identified our people we have we have identified each other easily even acquaintances who have uh, just we have met once or twice we have been able to communicate uh, and we have identified them but at the same time mask made us uh, when we first put on now mask has become more or less a part of all life. but initially when put on the mask what happened you found a smell and that smell was coming from within you it was not from outside it made at least it made me realize that the mask is bringing out how bad my eyes smell my smell which is being tolerated by all my colleagues all my loved ones is it that bad we are i am continuously breathing out that kind of a foul smell and yet everyone is reacting to it and i think if you all reflect back it's the same with everyone this is happening so we need to take some time for reflections reflecting on our lives reflecting on uh the things that are happening around us and uh, slowly expand our way of thinking so with all that i have said let's come back to this word meditation again we need to this reflection that i am suggesting you to do how do you do that 
to do that, you need to just slow down. Slow down everything that is happening in your life. Slow down the way you think. The, see, we have become very impatient with our present mobile phones, iPads, and uh, everything going online. Can we just slow down? Can we just, uh, for five minutes a day, leave apart the mobile phone, get away from everything else, just sit and think. Think about the breathing and concentrate only on the breathing. Concentrate on the most distant thing that you can see. Uh, maybe, uh, say, Jupiter, Saturn, and so on. Think of that. And slowly, if you do that, you'll see that you have your breathing has become more rhythmic. You will find that slowly the entire body seems to be relaxing. And that itself is meditation. So do that. The simple practices of physical and mental health helps you a lot. It will help you cope up with things. On the other hand, uh, there are certain tools we can use. Like uh, digital well-being is a part of everyone's mobile phone these days. Try that. After 9, make the screen less attractive. Make it black and white. Give time for yourself. Be selfish. Be very selfish towards yourself. Then only things will improve. We try to focus on being very benevolent. We give all our time to everyone else except ourselves. Be selfish with time. Give time to yourself. Moving on, the third aspect of my talk is about stress. Now, stress is a very, very integrated part of our life these days. And we are stressed almost 90% of the day. But this stress which has come in our life, have we invited it? Before coming to this session, I was trying to find two definition. What is the definition of depression and what is the definition of happiness? When I made a search, proper definitions in the dictionary, not some vague things that are given, I found that I got 18 different, 18 different definitions of depression. But definition of happiness I could not find. So how negative the whole human race has become. We are trying to define depression, we are trying, trying to define a very negative state of mind. Whereas happiness, we don't even know what happiness is, we cannot define it. Or maybe even uh, if we go literally and poetically, wh whatever way we go, it's very defined. It's not uh, about uh, we, 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 maybe we are not able to really define happiness. But uh, let me let me ask you a question now. So if you have your notebooks and I'm asking you a question, who are you? Can you just write it down? I'm giving you say uh, one minute. Just write down in a notebook, who are you? Try that.
Okay, that's more or less one minute. Okay, uh, even if you have not written it, you have just thought about the answer. So let's see what you have written. Most of you might, must have written, I am and your name. And then the next line may be, I am an assistant professor or a professor of so and so. Okay. That means I am my name and I am my job. Is that so? Is your identity only your job? Are you something beyond that? We need to uh, go inside and find out what we really are. I can again ask you another thing, which is very, very, uh, it's a, uh, we all know that we'll be dying one day. And we don't, we are very, very answered. We are not, we cannot predict that. Assuming that, we are all dead today, but, and we need to write our obituary column. What will you write there? Just think of it. There, no one is going to see what is written, that this person, so-and-so, die, died on this date. He was or she was a professor of this and this in this institute. Okay, first line gone, second line. What comes in the third line? That's what I want to know. And that's what you will find very difficult. We don't have a third line in our life. We have restricted our lives to only the first two lines that we have. That I am so and so and I am my job. When you go to the third line, we start thinking what, and that's where we need to think. How do we connect to the world, either socially, uh, spiritually, family-wise, whatever it is. And when you start thinking in that third line, you will find that you start being selfish about yourself and being selfish about yourself, you'll be really good to the rest of the world. So, I can tell you a story to elaborate this thing. Uh, one of my students, uh, he was in a kind of a depression and all. Uh, he was a PhD student. So, and then he had recovered. Okay. Now, to make things easy, what, uh, just to get things going, I took him to a Zakir Hussain concert. And Zakir Hussain concert, you know, the tickets are costly, and I bought a it was around seven, eight years back. I bought uh, good tickets. At that time, it was around maybe <coughs> some 2,500 per ticket, something like that. So I was there with him, and uh, the concert started. And uh, then I was really enjoying the tabla and all. And I see what my student is doing. I see that he is just looking at his phone. I got what's uh, what what's happening. I have spent so much of money, and he is just looking at his phone. Then I, at that moment, I took. Uh, what do I do? No, I could. Uh, we all have been in these kind of situations. Okay. Now, immediately what I could have done it then is I have told him, see, I have spent such a lot of money to 
bring you here and you were just staring at your phone. I could have done that. But anyway, I thought, let me observe what he does. Okay. So in such a situation, what can we do? <clears throat> the initial thought can be that uh, what happens as uh, a faculty. Uh, what is wrong with this generation? This generation is absolutely useless. They are all stuck to their mobile phones. <coughs> so we start judging them. Okay. And when we are judging them, I'll say that we, have gi we are giving him or her a red card. Okay. And this red card is given by this animal in us. Can we see? This is the jackal, a very, <clears throat> you know, uh, cunning animal. It always has the attacking mode. So this is our mode of thinking now. We are trying to attack like a jackal. But before attacking, what we do? We'll try to judge. Judge what? How is based on our own assumptions? We have not seen what the person is doing on our own assumptions. Oh, this person, he has an iPhone. Uh, parents must, must be rich. He is wearing uh, this kind of a perfume. Uh, then all sorts of judgments. And uh, this judgment, uh, when we are doing, we are also doing one more thing. We are trying to fit, fit things that we like or dislike. What we find interesting and we find <coughs> uninteresting. Okay. Now, at that moment, if I would have told him that everything is wrong with your generation, you are just watching the mobile phone instead of watching the concert, I would have uh, maybe destroyed the relationship. But most of the times we are doing that. We're trying to with this jackal. We're trying to attack. And that is our response. But instead of the jackal, we can also be like a hedgehog or a cuddly uh, little uh, puppy also you can think of. Okay, a hedgehog is a very vulnerable animal. So sometimes we are we also become very vulnerable. Let's say instead of a student, it is your own son or your own daughter. You will think, this was a mistake to bring him here. I, I should have taken uh, him to a movie. I should have taken him to something more exciting. What is that student thinking? Uh, like... I am just, uh, the student must be thinking that I am stuck up with this old gentleman. He doesn't know my tastes. So you, it makes you very, very vulnerable. Okay. So when you are taking this yellow card of being vulnerable. The third thing is something like this animal. Okay. Now, this animal, it's not very popular in India, but this animal is something called, uh, it's called the mere cat, M-W-E-R, mere cat. It will just stand in this position for hours together and just observe things, what's happening. So we also at times can become very, very observant. We just wait and we see and keep on thinking. what must be the right thing to do? Have I done the right thing bringing him here? Or could I have taken him elsewhere? So here I am not vulnerable. I'm just thinking. Okay. In the, when I'm like this animal, I'm vulnerable. I'm cursing myself. Oh, I should not have done that. Here I'm just observing. Okay, let's see what he does. I will take a decision based on what he does. That kind of a thing. Okay. Then, 
the fourth animal that we can think of is this dolphin see a dolphin is a highly intelligent animal by any standards and <clears throat> what a dolphin does is it tries to connect so think uh, from my perspective i wanted to make it very special for my student i'm hoping that he likes it so i have this hope now okay i'm trying to do good for my student let me see how he responds so this is the third stage so i have this for the dolphin i have put the blue card okay i'm just putting these cards so that it's uh, you can put anything that makes you remember okay so you have this blue card and you are thinking i have done whatever i could i think it is right for him let's see how he behaves and then it can be the this stage giraffe giraffe as an animal you know it has some characteristics it's the tallest animal but at the same time it has a very big heart the among the mammals it means uh, the land animals it has one of the biggest heart it has a very long neck and it sees everything from the top so from the top you see and you see and think what must be going on inside that student or inside that child who has faced so much he has, he is coming out of some kind of a depression it must be a war going on inside him yet he has just come with me it was my choice i haven't even asked him whether he wants to come to this concert or not yet he has come so we see from a very high perspective what is happening to his life and when that happens you when you become so, something like a giraffe you see things with a very bigger perspective you find then that things will improve now coming back to the boy i could have taken any of these paths i could have just uh, told him uh this generation is hopeless he was uh, all stuck with the mobile phone that moment my connection with the boy must have would would have been again gone wrong or i would have uh, uh, told him uh, it was my mistake yeah okay i'm sorry that also it's not a very good thing to do third was observe that's what i was doing fourth i it's my i wanted to make it special for you let's see it is special or not so we are, we are still thinking positively and fifth is we are thinking in his terms how is he looking at the problem okay now in when uh, when this was going on he hands over me his phone he has made a facebook post with sir enjoying zakir hussein's concert below that he has written sir you are the best and he has tagged me so you see the thing he is the generation is different he is multitasking yet he has searched out um like uh, the uh, then later he showed me he had searched out uh, the about the concert about the venue he got all the information and he was very very proud that he was sharing such a wonderful concert with me and i could have just destroyed in one line if i would have told him that you are in the new generation and you have just you are i'm just wasting time with you and we all are doing that at all times so again 
प्लीज स्लो डाउन प्लीज स्टार्ट थिंकिंग वी थिंक ऑफ स्ट्रेस वी थिंक ऑफ एवरी थिंग बट वी हैव स्टॉप थिंकिंग एक्चुअली एंड स्ट्रेस इफ वी लुक एट इट स्ट्रेस इज अ वेरी वेरी you know yeah they say oh, what psychosomatic reaction okay if you go to stress so stress is a if you look at the definition of stress stress is basically a response response of the body to some kind of a demand which we have placed on it and that demand that demand can be a internal demand or an external demand now stress developed during the process of human evolution in human evolution we had this fight or flight uh, we had this uh, process of fight or flight imagine a caveman you are the caveman you are sitting in your cave and uh, there is a fire and you are Uh, doing some kind of ancient dance some hoo ha in uh, and uh, dancing around the fire and enjoying the evening and suddenly you listen that a lion or a tiger is just roaring outside your den outside your cave what do you do immediately the body responds whatever instrument you have a javelin or a stick cling it to it very hard and when you cling to it uh, your body is in a mode i shall either attack or i have to run away so that is what is the stress response either you fight or we flight and when the body is getting ready for that a lot of hormones are being released our hands have to be a you know very tight so the moment we are making this hands tight the heart is pumping more blood so adrenaline is being pushed out the hormone adrenaline is being pushed out at the same time two other hormones are also coming out dopamine and cortisol cortisol is releasing sugar into your system that sugar helps you to get more energy and dopamine dopamine is for motor control the you know uh, when you uh, are trying to make your moves to attack so you need more uh, concentration of strength in your muscles and all so that is done because go dopamine has been released so dopamine motivates you it gives you better control adrenaline it increases the heart beat it increases your blood pressure at the same time and it enlarges your pupils so that you get, even if you are running you your vision becomes more clearer so these three are being released <clears throat> now when these three hormones are being released and you just have to decide between whether you fight with that lion or you run away now that was some thousands of years back when we were cave men but now we have evolved and as we have evolved what has happened is the lions have disappeared but the reactions have not so today i receive a phone call immediately i get stressed the moment i get stressed up all these hormones are playing their roles the corti cortisol it is increasing my blood pressure this blood pressure uh, cortisol is increasing my blood sugar adrenaline is increasing my blood pressure and this is happening maybe 20 times a day 30 times a day so what's happening in the long run we are becoming a victim of our own hormones 
that blood uh, extra blood sugar that increase in blood pressure all that is getting accumulated and then we end up spending the other part of our income i have already told you what we do with our income 10000 for food and a little bit more for our clothing and rent and whatever and the other part we have to invest now in medicines because this stress is has set in so we have this alarm reaction which is going on okay and if you go deeper into stress you will find that stress does not uh, affect uh, in a, uh, you in a single uh, shot uh, there are levels here also first there is this uh, fight and flight thought then you have the alarm reaction the body uh, you know it's like a alarm for your body rise up get ready so some hormones are released next is the stage of resistance yes i should fight or i should run away but in both cases whether you fight it out or you decide to run away the next thing that happens is you feel a state of exhaustion because the body has burnt up a lot of extra things that you really didn't need you didn't you did not need that rush that what we call the adrenaline gush okay we did not need that rush of hormones we did not need that extra blood pressure we did not need that extra blood sugar but yet we have done that now should we be doing that what is the answer i think everyone will agree that it has to be a no it cannot be a yes we do not want all these things to happen to us yet we are inviting these things every day every moment of our life we need to realize here that we all are very very unique and we since we all are unique we don't need to copy someone people can be okay, our ideals in life okay somebody is good at something that doesn't mean that i have to copy that person i am unique i am good at some things that i know but i am equally bad at a few other things let's accept that start accepting because ultimately we think of big things uh, like uh, intolerance we need to tolerate ourselves tolerate our failures tolerate what the our uh, uh, flaws once we learn to do that you will find that stress or or uh, this uh, negative things do not make a major difference to our lives when that acceptance is very very important in our lives okay so that's more or less what i wanted to talk about now if anyone wants to uh, as i said i'm just a professor in physics with not much experience in all these things so i if you, anyone wants to join in give some suggestions give some better thoughts please join in either through voice or chat whatever we can continue okay i have a question here is caffeine uh, just a minute is caffeine in coffee good for our health okay <clears throat> uh 
this question what is good for your health you have to decide it okay we cannot i'll not give you a very general answer okay but uh, i find uh, a very interesting thing in bhagavad gita if you go to chapter 16 you will find they ha it has given a lot of uh, ideas about good food good uh, way of living but if you interpret it in plain simple english there are three ways of life rajasik tamasik and sattvic sattvic is very very uh, you know uh, clean kind of a living a saintly kind of a living on the other hand you have the tamasik where you live for all the worldly pleasures and in between you have the rajasik what is uh, the balanced one any food anything you take in moderation that's not going to harm you the body can absorb that you drink a few cups two or three cups of coffee a day you can absorb it very easily but in offices i have seen there are people who drink 20 cups of tea 20 cups of coffee every day when you how are doing that you are definitely not doing any good to your body so let, it's not about the ingredient you take it it is all about the quantity if the quantity is correct your body is going to take it yes there are certain things which need to be totally avoided those things uh, i don't need to elaborate here but uh, <clears throat> and you can easily live without those but things that are edible why not everything can be eaten so caffeine if it's in very moderate quantities it is good for your body it's hap it's helping you see uh, caffeine has uh, some uh, i forgot the name of that chemical part of it but it makes you uh, you gets you into the thinking mode it makes your thoughts clearer but at the same time if you take too much of it it uh, affects your blood pressure and once your blood pressure see again get back to your basic engineering blood pressure the pressure has to, if it is increased every in organ of your body is just getting extra work to do that extra work is exhausting it your kidney is getting exhausted your liver is getting exhausted so once these things are happening the organs in your body are getting exhausted slowly the signs of exhaustion show in that's why you will find that the in your the, the liver stops functioning the right way the heart stops functioning the right way Okay, so that is why you need to just think what to do. Think about yourself, and I think the answer is always within you. Ask the right questions. Learn to ask the right questions to yourself. What I I take a class uh, of research methodology I, and I tell my students, please record your voice and listen to it. Do the same thing. You start asking questions to yourself. Why am I at all uh, doing something? Why I am? What is my what is the purpose of doing? Try to answer that before actually doing the work. You will find that. It solves a lot of things. Okay, and then yes. Okay, how do uh, there's a question from V Mohan Raj? How do you react to failures? Because this puts a lot of pressure on people. Okay. See, failures are bound to happen in your life, whether you like it or not what you are 
today if you are a successful professor assistant professor and you count the number of failures you have had in your life and the number of successes you will find that the number of success you can count within your fingers the number of failures in your life are in hundreds you have failed maybe in some certain subject you may have failed uh, impressing someone when you were a uh, adolescent you might have failed in some sports failures are a part of life we need to accept it fight we don't need to fight each and every failure we are not good at everything but whatever we are good at we need to make those skills better if you it's all about the frame of mind you have to get into that frame of mind where you concentrate more on the positives that you have failures will happen in every every aspect of your life you will find that failures outnumber the successes yet the success that you earn is built up on the failures you have the thinking has to be clear on that there's a question from avilasha singh what is the constant feeling of having so less time in the day and so much to do although we have 24 the result it results in ending a day with a feeling of dissatisfaction how to cope with this okay time management for time uh, see uh, uh, time management i had done a very small uh, 20 minute talk some time back and i found a very interesting thing there is a small concept called roti r o t i return of time invested you whatever you are doing just think of it what is the return i am getting for the time i am investing because your time is very precious maybe uh, the uh, we think uh, our life in terms of whatever age we are think of it as a countdown a timer in a countdown mode you will find that every second that is passing we are losing something from that timer so time is that precious and if time is that precious then if i am investing time on a particular activity what is the return i am getting on that make a judgment of that if you can do a judgment on that it makes time management easier how much time you put into certain activities have a check on that uh, if you go to any time management website or time management book you will find that there are certain things which are called the time hijackers and what are your time hijackers today in today's world it is whatsapp facebook and this kind of things can we put a restriction use your this thing digital well being restrict whatsapp to half an hour a day facebook to 20 minutes a day make those habits put time into more effective things you will find that you have too too much time you 24 hours are more than enough but uh, and uh, you don't always multitask this has become a habit with us we try to multitask too many things we are doing uh, something we are thinking something here in the back of my mind uh, of our mind let's stop doing that let's start concentrating on things do one thing at a time finish it go over to the next these are simple techniques that you can follow but that helps you in uh, managing the time more easily for everything that i have said give it a trial give it a trial for 7 days if you don't like it don't do it if you like it continue it's make life simple take easy decisions why do you you don't force yourself into anything so what i have uh, told you to do first is the yoga part of it toes to head joints movement after
told about uh, a little bit of breathing techniques, how to do it. It's your choice. Little bit of walking that you can do. Little bit of thinking that you need to do about yourself. Whether you need to give more importance to something, less importance to something. See, the, you know, the entire choice is yours. Uh, but uh, we need to take that decision that from today onwards, I will live for myself. I have been living for everyone else in the world. I have been living for my kids, for, for my wife, for my husband, for my family, for this, that, my friends. But I'll also live for myself. And I'll live for myself maybe 10 minutes a day. Take that decision. I think things will become much, much easier for you. So with that, I think we can come to the end of the session. I don't see any further questions coming. So, Akhil, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So we can bring an end to the session. OK, sir. So thank you so much, sir, for giving uh, such a nice talk on to promote the fit fit india uh, for the for us and on behalf of organizing committee and the participants also i want to thank you very much sir and i hope all from your enthusiastic uh, lecture will motivate us to work hard to achieve the fitness as well as to live as a well-being. Okay, so thank you so much, sir. So, okay. and for the participants, uh, next session will start from twelve o'clock. So we will meet from twelve o'clock. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a nice day.